Hi friends, happy Friday. Um, we are just continuing on with our read aloud. I know today is hoodie day. It's actually our last PARP dress up day if you're sticking with the calendar um, since we are at the end of the month. Um, so today is hoodie day. I'm actually not wearing a hood. I wish my, this is my favoriteest. It's actually my only but it's my most favorite bathrobe and it's so fuzzy and warm and I'm down here in my basement um, where we've talked about this when we talked about why the colonial people, oh Thor's here, Thor you wanna say hi? I say hi, I say hi, yes, yes, yes. Um, Madeline's sleeping, but Thor will join us, yes. Um, we talked about this with colonial times, why pe don't move my computer. Um, they used to store their food underground. Remember we talked about the basement's cooler, colder? Anyway, and I told you how we keep our basement a little cooler. Um, but I love it down here. So I'm in my fuzzy bathrobe. It doesn't have a hood, but we'll pre we'll pretend. Um, I'm picking up with chapter six because Miss Donahue read to you yesterday four and five from our book, Classroom 13, um, with Miss Linda and our friends. Dowdy, I have to read. Um, so I'm going to read for you actually chapter six, seven, and eight. Um, and you'll see why chapter seven is legit a paragraph. So that's why I picked up another one. So here we go. Chapter six, Sophia. Here's a little sketch that's on the chapter title. Okay. When she was born, Sophia was partially deaf. Now she wore hearing aids so she could hear. And every night as she drifted off to sleep, she listened to Sounds of the Rainforest on her laptop. She found the exotic sounds of insects and birds and monkeys quite soothing. You see, Sophia loved nature. She talked to plants for hours, protected bugs, and hugged trees. Sometimes they were rather long, awkward hugs. Because of that, Sophia believed the term tree hugger was invented for her. Per copyright law, she thought she deserved a nickel every time someone said it. Not that she needed any nickels. Now, she was a billionaire. After cashing her check for $1,037,037,000.04, she flew to South America and bought the Amazon. Not a piece of the Amazon. The whole Amazon rainforest. Then she put up a handmade sign all around it that read, No saws allowed, protected area, keep out construction jerks, and trees are for hugging, not for cutting. The signs were made on recyclable paper, of course. She put up hundreds of these signs without using a single drop of bug spray to protect herself. After all, she believed that bug spray harmed the atmosphere and hurt innocent bugs. But the Amazon insects didn't care about Sophia the way she cared about them. Sophia was bitten by 20 different species of bugs during her travels. By the time she was done, her skin was swollen with hives, warts, and awful rashes. Next, she built protective sanctuaries for all the endangered species there. She paid local hunters to stay away and spread the word that the Amazon was under new management. Whatever you say, the hunters said, shivering in their boots. Sophia's face was so monstrous from all the bug bites, she looked like a monster from a horror movie. Sophia didn't care what she looked like. If the pygmy marmosets could talk, she knew they'd thank her. In instead, most of them just flung poop at her. Before she could buy Madagascar and save its rainforest, Sophia ran out of money. Property taxes, land deals, flights, bribes, and sign-making supplies were not cheap. The fat black markers alone were five bucks each. Still, Sophia had saved the rainforest. I love nature, I love nature, Sophia repeated to herself over and over while she itched and itched and itched. All right, chapter seven. This is a doozy, ready? That's all we got. Chapter seven. Santiago. Santiago didn't get a dime from Miss Linda's lottery winnings. That's what happens when you stay homesick or pretend to be sick. Remember, he was the one that was absent that day. 
Last chapter for me. Chapter 8. Zimina or Zimina. They pronounce it that way. Every day on Zimina Zhao's walk home from school, she stopped at the strip mall. She would high five the florist, pick up some caramellos for her abuela, that's Spanish for grandma, and grab a new brochure at the travel agency. Her family couldn't afford to travel, but Zimina liked getting lost in the pictures of faraway islands and famous landmarks. But not today. Today, with her check for one billion thirty-seven million thirty-seven thousand thirty-seven dollars and four cents, Zimina ran home as fast as she could. She skipped her usual stop at the strip mall. The florist was ready to high-five her, but all he saw was a girl-shaped blur run by. His hand was raised, but left high-fiveless in the air. The owner of the sweets shop looked at her clock. She wondered if Zimina was sick. She always picked up caramellos for her abuela, but not today. Not even the travel agent who let Zimina take all the travel brochures she wanted, free of charge, was worried. The new Grand Canyon brochures weren't going to look at themselves. At that moment, on the other side of the tracks, in the poor side of town, Zimina bolted through her front door like an Olympic runner. Mama, Papa, Abuela, Zimina said, out of breath. She held up her check. You're not going to believe this. And they didn't. You see, the Joua family had very little money. Mr. and Mrs. Joua both worked two jobs and worked hard for every dollar. So they found it hard to believe their daughter could become an instant billionaire simply by just showing up to school. You're right, I don't believe it, Mr. Joua said. He stared at the clock. Me neither, her mom said. She kept counting the commas. Truly, mija, her abuelo said from her bed. I'm so happy for you, mija. Now you can see the world just like you've always wanted. Will you come with me, abuela? Zimina asked. I wish I could, but no, I'm too old and too tired, but you should go. Abuela was Zimina's best friend. She didn't want to see the world without her. But as Zimina stared at her collected travel brochures, she had an idea. If she couldn't take her abuela to see the world, then she would bring the world to her abuela. First, Zimina rent, rented the Statue of Liberty. She had it airlifted from Liberty Island right to her driveway. Zimina thought it was much less green in person than in the brochures. Zimina repainted the statue electric, paint, electric pink and gave her a pair of bright yellow sunglasses. When she returned it to New York City, everyone seemed to like the new look. Zimina then rented Mount Rushmore. It was airlifted from South Dakota to her backyard. She agreed with the brochure that the monument was impressive, but she thought it needed something extra. So she hired a sculptor to chisel her abuela's face next to President Lincoln's. It was her abuela's idea to add a mustache and a mohawk. Zimina called the French government about renting the Eiffel Tower, but someone had already bought it. Zimina wondered if it was someone in her class. Zimina spent her fortune renting other famous landmarks. She rented the Great Sphinx from Egypt, the Great Wall of China from China, the Taj Mahal from India, and the Leaning Tower of Pisa from Italy. She even rented Big Ben from England. Though it was only temporary, the Queen was not pleased about it. Abuela loved everything that Zimina brought home for her to see except for Stonehenge, which Abuela called just a bunch of rocks. When she ran out of enough money to rent new landmarks, Zimina had just enough left over to buy her Abuela a brand new and very comfy bed and a lifetime supply of caramellos. Together, they looked at new travel brochures. They didn't have a lot of money, but they had a lot of love, which, like the brochures, was free of charge. That's the end of chapter eight. Your next chapter, which Miss Morse will take over from on Monday, don't work through the weekend, come on now, um, is of another student, okay? I hope you guys are really enjoying the book. It's cute, it's fun, it's light. You get to just sit back and listen if you want. Um, 
feel free to keep on posting any questions that you have or just comments to say hi. That's totally fine too. That's what we're here for. If you finish your packets, because you're getting towards the end of our two weeks. Sorry, I have to sneeze and I'm trying not to. Um, go on IXL, okay? If you want to go on IXL, but you forgot your username and password, message me or Miss Donahue, we have the lists. So um, we have all of that information for you. If you forgot it, um, you can do language ELA. I think it's titled Language Arts Activities Grade 4. Any of them for now. Um, I'm sure Miss Donahue is fine with you doing any of the math activities. Um, if we're out a li little longer than we thought we were going to be, which I don't know anything yet, um, IXL will be a good friend of yours. Um, well, you'll probably get more specific assignments, but until you hear anything else, if you're bored, um, not that I think you want to do schoolwork, but if you set a little time aside and you finished your packets, go on IXL. There's a lot of other great education sites out there now too that are kind of getting rid of any of their fees that they would usually charge. So check them out, all right? Let us know if you find one you like and post it here. Okay, we miss you guys. Hope you're doing well, um, staying inside or outside around your house um, and staying healthy. All right, guys, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.